Hey, do you have such a hard time making friends that you learned how to literally make friends? Has your fighter ever been trapped in a situation that can't be solved by bonking so they have to find an alternate solution? M more bonking? Well, congratulations! You might be an Echo Knight. But what is an Echo Knight? Well, buy that tandem bicycle, put two straws in every milkshake, and get ready to play something other than solitaire because we're seeing double. Have you guys ever heard the term shadow boxing? Well, as fun as that sounds, it's not very often that the shadow boxes back. But rather than a shadow of your former self, you've learned how to call upon the shadow of the self that never was. This magic is called dunamis and deals with the forces that control probability. So essentially, if you are the you who woke up constipated, somewhere out there in the great wide multiverse is also the you who remembered to have a bran muffin. Luckily for you, that you is friendly enough to allow you to ask you for assistance anytime you need it. You get it? Good. Cause I'm not sure I can get another take of that. So you somehow broke reality into letting you squeak out a fart cloud version of yourself at will. How is that useful? Well, thankfully there's an entire martial archetype dedicated to proving that silence isn't the only thing that's deadly. But first... Have you ever wished you could go back and see the world from the eyes of your younger self? When was the last time you let yourself really be a kid again? Well, my friends over at 1985 Games have the thing that can do just that. And apparently you guys love that idea quite a bit, because their new Kickstarter, Obojima Tales from the Tall Grass, already has 11,000 backers and $1.2 million pledged, which... Holy shit, guys. <laughs> I can't say enough positive things about this Kickstarter and am so excited for when it finally comes out. If you haven't heard, Obojima is a campaign setting inspired by the works of Miyazaki and the sense of adventure from The Legend of Zelda, all rolled into a beautiful book. With new magic items, spells, potions, and at least three new subclasses, including the Bard College of Masks and the Druid Circle of Petals, as well as much, much, much more. The Kickstarter is still live, so hurry and back it before it's too late so you can get your copy of Obojima as soon as it's done printing. You can go to this link right here in the description below to support Obojima and take a look at all of 1985 Games' works because they're really getting us the good stuff, guys. Just remember to tell them your boy Yumba, you might be a D&D sent you. And a huge congratulations and thank you to 1985 Games for sponsoring the show. Now, back to the video. So you know that one day your predisposition towards harnessing the universal laws of probability can result in creating a spooky double. But how do you utilize that? Well the obvious answer isn't doing your math homework or having someone to play cards with, but learning how to that's right, because as fun as it may be to send your ghostly double into a haunted house to really freak out the carnies, it's much more fun to teach a bad guy that a scuffle with you is like bringing a knife to a fight with several knives. So we start as a fighter, which of course gives us a fighting style. The wide variety of options here are a dream for customizing how exactly you want to bring down the pain. But depending on how you want to play, defense, dueling, or great weapon fighting would be my choices to keep things simple or superior technique or two weapon fighting if you want to make things a little more interesting. Fighters also get second win, letting you catch your breath and regain 1d10 plus your fighter level in hit points once per short rest for when you get a little overwhelmed and need to refocus your attention on beating the shit out of people. Second level gets us Action Surge, which is just a stupid good ability, allowing you to take an additional action once per short rest. As we all know, fighters specialize in harnessing not just raw might, but their hardcore ADHD to bonk everything everywhere all at once. Especially now that we just hit level 3! The anticipation is finally over as we can now manifest Echo at will. Hold on, I need you guys to understand that for a second. At will means always, over and over. No proficiency bonus countdown, no equal to your wisdom score, infinite forever, just Oh, hi, Mark. As long as you're awake and not currently playing pin the tail on the donkey, you can poof your echo into a location you can see within 15 feet. You can only do one at a time, so far, but your echo has decent AC and immunity to all conditions, but only one hit point, making it an excellent distraction or a ghostly shield. <laughs> The Echo can move 30 feet at a time without the use of an action, but if it gets 30 feet away from you, it will disappear at the end of your turn. 
However, as long as the Echo is up, you can spend 15 feet of movement to swap places with it, you can attack through the Echo with one of your many attacks, and you can use your reaction to take opportunity attacks from the Echo's location. And if that doesn't sound busted enough, at the same level we can unleash Incarnation to allow our Echo to take center stage and take an additional attack whenever we take the attack action. This does have a limited number of uses equal to your constitution modifier, which regains on a long rest. This means that if we wanted to really make a bad guy suffer, you can attack attack four times in one round using an action surge and two uses of your Unleash Incarnation. You are an absolute barrage of swords and ghost swords, allowing you to rack up a combo count that would make even Ken and Ryu think twice. But my favorite part of this entire ability is the idea that the bad guy thought he was fighting one dude and then Casper squared up to throw some hands. Fifth level gets us extra attack, which means more for us than it ever has before. That makes two attacks per round, four with an action surge, and six if we Unleash Incarnation each action. And because our Echo only takes a bonus action to manifest, we can do all of this on the very first round of combat. As a DM, if you see this chaos blitzing toward your main antagonist, you better pray to the dice gods that your player rolls six ones in a row, because you can basically shred any character sheet the Echo Knight happens to have a beef with. 7th level buffs our Echo a little more with Echo Avatar, allowing you to transfer your consciousness into it for 10 minutes at a time. Much like the Find Familiar ability, you can see and hear through your Echo, and it can now move up to a thousand feet away, but only while this ability is up. Also, apparently you're not supposed to be allowed to use your Unleash Incarnation ability while using the Echo Avatar, but this is not explicitly stated anywhere in the rules for this subclass. No, instead, this is written somewhere on the app formerly known as Twitter in the section of the player's handbook, exclusive to that site. As far as I'm concerned, your ghostly avatar can sneak into an enemy castle and try to assassinate the head bad guy without issue. Your echo can move a thousand feet and that includes through walls and into the air, so have fun maneuvering yourself into a good hiding spot and letting your spooky reflection take all the blame. Ninth level gets us Indomitable, which I still believe needs a buff, but allows you to re-roll a saving throw once per long rest if you fail. It's not horrible to have, but an improvement would be greatly appreciated. 10th level gets us yet another Echo ability with Shadow Martyr. Now, once per short rest, you can use your reaction to teleport your Echo into the line of fire, blocking an attack meant for you or an ally you can see, even if they're further than 30 feet away. Forcing the attacking creature to attack your Echo instead lets you protect the squishy casters when they're subject to a huge hit. Basically, if you have the Echo up and you see an attack against a friend, even if they're hundreds of feet away, you can send your Echo to intercede. If the Echo survives with its 18 AC, it remains in that space until your turn, when you can then teleport to its space at only the cost of 15 feet of movement. While very situational to set up, the idea that you can teleport that far, that cheaply, is pretty incredible. 11th level gets us yet another extra attack, making that 3 attacks per round, 6 with an action surge, and 8 with unleash incarnation for when you really want to make the bad guys ask themselves, was any of this worth it? 13th level gets us a second use of indomitable for poops and giggles, but 15th level is where we want to be. Now you can absorb the energy of a destroyed echo to gain 2d6 plus your con mod and temp hit points a number of times equal to your constitution modifier, getting all uses back on a long rest. As sad as it may be to watch your shadow clones disappear by the handful, it's nice to know they send you a little parting gift before they- 17th level gets us a third use of Indomitable, fun but not flashy, and a second use of Action Surge, hell yeah, but we'll circle back to that. Because 18th level is where this subclass goes from great to holy shit. Now you can summon two Echoes each time you manifest, because if they're gonna fight one, why not fight the whole crew? This gives you the ability to cover a pretty large area in order to defend your allies, or keep an Echo close at hand for when you use the Shadow Martyr ability. You can split them up to be fighting multiple enemies at once, switch between them every turn if your allies need the help, or absolutely gang up on the arch enemy to turn them from big bad necromancer into black pudding. Finally, at 20th level, we get a capstone perfect for a fighter with a fourth extra attack. That's four attacks per round, eight with an action surge, and ten attacks with Unleash Incarnation. But remember, we just got another action surge not that long ago. So make that 20 attacks in the first two rounds of combat. If there is anything still standing after you get done with that flurry, I, I don't know, man. Maybe just let them have it. So is the Echo Knight worth all the hype? Hell yes it is. I don't know what lunatic thought this subclass was a good idea, but I have to say, this is the kick in the pants the fighter needed. When it comes to sheer damage potential, I don't think any other fighter subclass even comes close besides, well, 
but we'll get there one day. But the versatility, the damage, the roleplay potential, mwah! I don't think you could ask for more. I didn't even really have to dig into feats to make this subclass spectacular, but they're still all there if you want to make your Echo Knight even more devastating. Imagine combining Great Weapon Master, Polearm Master, and Sentinel to this build. Ugh, it's enough to make a man salivate. Especially considering all the ways you can block movement, lock down enemy position, and rack up damage, it's a beautiful thing to witness. What more is there to say? This subclass comes with such a beautiful package that I don't think you ever really need to multiclass, but if you did, there are some insane combos I can think of right out the gate. Multiclassing Assassin Rogue makes you an absolute menace to try to pin down, letting you bounce around the battlefield or take out an enemy leader in their sleep from afar. My boy the Bladesinger can't be counted out either as dipping into this can help you shrug off the Bladesinger's biggest weaknesses or just going straight Barbarian with a 3 level Echo Knight dip to give the Barbarian a free teleport which honestly just sounds terrifying as shit. Whatever you go with, the Echo Knight's flexibility extends to pretty much every class in a way that not many subclasses can mimic. And if that doesn't put it at the top of many tier lists, I, I don't know what will. So if you like having company, but not so much you want them to talk, can deliver so many attacks the bad guy thinks they're fighting the entire party, and are the inspiration for my new cartoon series, Jasper the F*** Around and Find Out Ghost, guess what? You might be an Echo Knight. Hey guys, as always, a huge thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I always have a hard time figuring out what to say at the end of these, but if you like my stuff, subscribe to see more, and check out the poll to vote on what you want to see next, and as always, have a good one, and I'll see you very soon.